So, if you want to start making animations for Fallout 4, you're gonna need a few things to start. You'll need 3ds Max 2014 or 15, so you can actually make your animations. Havoc Content Tools 2014, which comes with a plugin for 3ds Max, which lets you export your animations in the HKX format. This is the file type that Fallout 4 uses for its animations. And finally, you'll need the Fallout 4 Animation Kit. This is available on Nexus Mods. It comes with a lot of files for 3ds Max, which are pretty much necessary for making Fallout 4 animations. Right now, you can't officially get Havoc Content Tools or 3ds Max 2014 or 15 anymore, unless you want to pour out a lot of your own money. I guess it would be illegal for me to tell you where to get these programs now, but there may be an anonymous guy in the comments that will give you some links. One of the things you should know first is how to convert vanilla animations from Fallout 4 to a file type that is compatible with 3ds Max. The Fallout 4 Animation Kit comes with a program called HKX Pack, and this program can be used to convert HKX animation files into FBX files, which is a file type that is compatible with 3ds Max. The only problem is that HKX Pack can only process 32-bit HKX files. Fallout 4's animations are 64-bit, so if we want to convert a Fallout 4 animation into an FBX, we need to first convert it into a 32-bit file. This is very easy to do. First, make sure you're in a 3ds Max scene that is saved. This is important because when you convert an HKX file into a 32-bit file, the new file will be put into the folder where your current scene is saved. Because the Havoc Content Tools plugin is installed for my 3ds Max, there is this Havoc Content Tools tab on the menu bar up here. Click on it and click on Export. Now, by default, there isn't any configuration set loaded in. Fortunately, the Fallout 4 Animation Kit comes with a Havoc Content Tools configuration preset that lets us export animations as an HKX and convert 64-bit HKX files into 32-bit. So, go to the Convert to 32-bit preset, choose the file you want to convert. I'm gonna use the Kellogg animation from the Cryopod scene at the start of the game. Now, when you choose the output directory, you need to delete the file path that is already here. Name the exported file, and click on Load Configuration. The reason why I deleted the file path here is because for some reason, my Havoc Content Tools can't export any animation to a folder that is one step away from the folder that the current scene is saved in. So, now all you need to do is open HKX Pack from the Fallout 4 Animation Kit folder, Take the 32-bit file that you converted, drop it into the program, and click on Convert to FBX. So, for animated, the animation rig that you would want to use is the Fallout 4 Cat Rig. This is also available on Nexus Mods. But right now, if I were to try and load the Kellogg animation we converted onto this rig, you can see that some weird things are happening. Our character is playing the animation, but the Cat Rig isn't affected at all. With the way that this scene is set up by default, the Fallout 4 skeleton is supposed to be constrained to the cat rig, but clearly the bone constraints have been overridden when we loaded in this animation. What you want is to be able to load the converted animation directly onto the cat rig. Fortunately, this is also very easy to do. Another file that the Fallout 4 cat rig comes with is this Fallout 4 biped cat import max file. In the file I showed you before, I mentioned that the Fallout 4 skeleton was constrained to the cat rig. In this file, it's the other way around. The cat rig is constrained to the Fallout 4 skeleton. This means that when you load in the Kellogg animation you converted, the cat rig will be copying the locations and rotations from the Fallout 4 skeleton. From here, I can collapse the cat animation layers. This will basically resample the animation onto the cat rig. And then I can save the animation on this cat rig as a clip file, which is an animation file that can be loaded onto other cat rigs. But before I do that, I want to make a slight adjustment to the head. The cat rig in the import scene and the cat rig in the animation scene are actually slightly different. As you can see here, the endpoint of the neck on the import rig is actually farther back than it is on the one in the animation scene. If I didn't make any adjustments right now in the import scene, then the neck would be unnaturally farther back when I get the animation onto the normal cat rig. So, to fix this, I'm gonna add a local adjustment layer to the cat import rig, and I will just rotate the neck forward about 30 degrees. Now I can collapse the animation layers, and save the animation as a clip file. 
For me, it usually takes a few minutes for a longer animation to be saved. But really short animations usually take a few seconds. So, before I load my clip animation in, I just want to set up some stuff in this file. When you open up the Fallout 4 Catrick file, this is the default mesh that is loaded on. This mesh doesn't match the character I'm making animations for, so I'm just going to delete this mesh and load in a different mesh that is more appropriate. So, I've already extracted the meshes from Fallout 4 by using the Bethesda Archive Extractor, and I have NIF Tools installed for 3ds Max. NIF Tools also comes in the Fallout 4 Animation Kit. When I load my mesh, I'm going to uncheck Import Skeleton. I just need to import a few more meshes. Now I just want to set up some animated camera stuff. So, in the game, any anim object can be made into an animated camera. I want to use either anim object A or B as my animated camera, because they are only parented to the root bone, and their positions will not be influenced by any other bone in the Fallout 4 skeleton. So, what I want to do is to constrain anim object A to the camera, so that I can animate the camera and have anim object A follow all of its transforms. But right now, if I were to try to move anim object A, I can't move it because its position and rotation seem to be constrained to the cat root bone right here. So to fix this, I'm going to place a dummy object, align it to the camera, link constraint the dummy to the camera, then I'll rotate the camera down 90 degrees so that the local Y axis on the dummy is pointing straight out of the lens of the camera. Now, click on Anim Object A and go to the Animation tab up here, and constrain its position and orientation to the dummy object. Two more things to note. Display the BIP camera as a box, and you can change the camera FOV under the Modify tab. Now, save this file, maybe make a backup, and use it whenever you start making an animation with an animated camera. To load a clip animation onto the cat rig, click on this little triangle bit at the base of the cat rig, and then there will be a section to the right where you can navigate to the clip animation you want. So, this animation from the base game uses an animated object for a Kellogg's gun. An animated object is basically just a prop that is used in the character's animation, and they work in Fallout 4 by being spawned in with annotations that are within an animation's data, and they are animated by being parented to a skeleton's anim object or anim objects. In the game's meshes, there is a folder that is dedicated to anim objects, and the one that I'm looking for is Kellogg's gun, right here. But before I import it into my scene, I want to open the mesh in scope so I can see the anim object bone that it's parented to. Right here, it says that it is parented to anim object R1. When I import the gun anim object into my scene, I'm going to link the loose parts of the gun to its receiver, because the receiver is where this mesh is connected to its anim object. And then I will constrain anim object R1 to the receiver, and then I will align the receiver to the R weapon bone, because this bone just so happens to be in the correct place. And then I will also link constrain the receiver to the R weapon bone. Now, I'm actually ready to animate the camera. In regards to moving and posing the camera, I'm not going to focus on that in this tutorial, but I will show you a couple of things I do whenever I animate my cameras. I use smooth tangents. Auto tangents are on by default. I wouldn't recommend changing that, but when I got a camera animation going, I just go into the curve editor, select the keyframes I want some smooth interpolation in between, and then I go and select smooth tangents up here. I also like to add some camera shake to my animation. I just click on the BIP camera, add a local adjustment layer, go up to assign controller, and add a noise float to the X, Y, and Z rotations. Now on each controller, set the frequency to 0.1, disable fractal noise, and set the strength to a lower number that is more appropriate for your FOV and camera movement. Make sure each controller has a different seed, and now you can actually animate the strength of the noise if you want. So my animation is pretty much done right now, but before I export it, I want to add some annotations to this animation. In Fallout 4, annotations are basically commands embedded within animation files that can make some pretty cool stuff happen. 
you can actually find the annotations to use by going through the first animation conversion step I mentioned earlier, but instead of converting an HGX file into a 32-bit file, you can convert it into an XML file, open the XML with a program like Notepad++, and then you will find the annotations a little bit lower into the document. If there aren't any annotations here, then the animation you converted just didn't have any. Now back to the animation. You're going to need an annotation to make Animal Object A into an animated camera, an annotation to make Kellogg's Gun load and draw on Anim Object R1, and I'm going to need a muzzle flash for Kellogg's Gun. This muzzle flash command actually only works on the Kellogg Gun Anim Object. Okay, now it's ready to export. So I'm going to go up to the Havoc Content Tools export window. With the animation kit configuration set loaded in, I'm going to set the preset to third person animation export. Under Create Skeleton and From File, I'm going to load in the Fallout 4 third person rig text file. And then for Create Animations, I'm going to load in that text file again. Now under Write to Platform, I will delete the export path like I did before. And I will name my file and I will load the configuration. And now my animation has been exported as an HKX file. Getting this animation into Fallout 4 is actually the easiest step by far. Basically, I have a pose pack from Nexus Mods installed for my game. Specifically, I have Dave's poses installed. And all I'm gonna do is go to my Fallout 4 directory, and I'm gonna find the files for this pose pack. Go to the location where the poses are stored, and in this case, I will open the gun poses folder and replace the G1 pose by renaming my animation to G1 and dropping it into the folder. Now, in a game, I can just open up the console and click on my character and type in play idle G1. And I'll change my FOV to what the camera was set to in 3ds Max. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of what I do whenever I make animations for Fallout 4. There are some more advanced stuff that I do, and I'm thinking of maybe making an advanced animation tutorial to just go for some of the more specific stuff that I do when I make my animations. Also, one thing that I decided to do was make a Discord server. The idea here is that people can ask me for help there, and they can also show me some of the stuff that they're working on there and maybe I can help them out with that. And also, I'm thinking of putting out some resources that people can use on that Discord server. Stuff that, that can help them make some of their own work. And that's it.